pastors in the church of the living God. That same character of God must be seen in us. We don't respect our persons. We don't take bribes. We don't do something for people who are, that is so scriptural, giving them a place and giving them a position that God has not given them. And it will take the grace of God. It will take the salvation of God. It will take real sanctification to so live that we don't look at the faces of people. We live by the word. I pray God will give you an eye the grace to so live. Look at number two here. Number two, the Lord of glory, perfectly free from respect of persons. It tells us in Matthew chapter 22, and we're reading from verse 16, Matthew 22, verse 16, and they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true. We know that thou art true. And really they knew. Although they came with pretense, but they knew. Although they came wanting to tempt him, but they knew. Although they came wanting to take a word from him and use his own word to persecute him. Uh, that's what Her 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 Herodians do. That's what persecutors do. They will use you to destroy you. They will use you to defame you. They will carve out a word you said. They will cut off a word you say and post it somewhere and they use your word quoted out of context to destroy you, to defame you, and to destroy your ministry. That, that's what the Herodians did. And that's what the persecutors of those days and of today too, that's what they do. And they sent out from them, out unto him, their disciples, with the Herodians, saying, Master, they don't mind what good name they call you if they can just trip you. We know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man. Neither carest thou for any man. Then it says, for thou regardest not the person of man. And we know that about Christ. Are we Christians? Are we Christ-like? Do we live like that? Do we behave like that? Somebody said, if, if a person is helping me, if a person is um, supporting me, if a person is taking good care of me, I don't care. What he does, I don't care what she does, I will always back him up. I may know he's wrong, I may know he's not living right, I may know he's going astray, I may know he's a backslider, I may know that he or she is on her way to hell. It doesn't matter to me, to them, to say if anybody is helping them. If anybody is uh, supporting them, if anybody has been so kind to them, they will blindly support him. Ah, Christ was not like that. Christ based his dealings with people on the word of God, not on he gave me butter, gave me bread, he sugared my tea, he did something for me, so even if he's going to hell, I'm going to support him going to hell. I'll not want to make him unhappy because he supports me. That one is not a Christian. That's what we call the milk of human nature. The milk of human nature. I'm going to support them. I'm going to regard them, whoever they are, because they helped me in the past. Christ 
taught the word in truth and Christ lived for the truth. I pray you and I will be like Christ. In Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 9, Romans chapter 2, verse 9, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. You would have thought, because these are the descendants of Abraham, that God will support them blindly. No, Jew or Gentile, he has the same word, the same way to get saved, the same doctrine to remain steadfast. He has the same word and the same thing with us who are believers. We walk in the same way and we deal with different people the same way according to the word of God. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and for glory and honor and peace to every man that walketh good. That's what you are looking for. That's what we are looking for. We are not looking at you know, the facial appearance. We are not looking at their handsomeness. We are not looking at their beauty. We are not looking at their tribe. We are not looking whether they come from my tribe or not. We are not looking at their nation. They come from my nation. No. The thing we are looking for in everyone, everyone we relate with, everyone we interact with, is that he walketh good. Not that he walked good in the past, but he's not a backslider. Not that he's promising us, I'll walk good, I'll do good in the future. Today, at the present time, the grace of God abides in him. He walketh good to the Jew force and also to the Greek. Whether they are Jew or they are Greek, the same thing all the Lord is looking for is that they have humbled themselves. He has given them grace and they keep on humbling themselves and he gives them more grace to keep on walking good. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, for there is no respect of persons with God. My friend, can you ever be like God? Godly like God. Godlike. Can you live like God? Or is it in your nature and it's irreversible for you that you live looking at the faces of people, looking at what they're doing for you, and so you cannot really have the backbone. You cannot have the courage. You cannot have the consistency of living like God that you are not a respecter of persons. For there is no respect of persons with God. Look at verse 16 there. In verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. We're looking at James chapter 3, verse 17. James chapter 3, in verse 17, for the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Any kind of wisdom that leads to impurity, any kind of wisdom that makes you entrenched, established in iniquity, impurity, that's not God's wisdom. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, peaceable. Now that we'll have peace, my friend, if you compromise, you're too strong. You have such a strong conviction. You're too biblical, scriptural. And we don't, we don't want that. And so we'll be at peace with you if you will compromise. Forget it. Forget it. We cannot compromise the word of God and allow ourselves to go to hell just because we want to be at peace with. That's why it says, 
if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live in peace with all men, if it be possible. How? If you don't have to compromise, if you don't have to be partial, if you don't have to let go your conviction, if you don't have to do anything that will make you disobedient unto God, be at peace, if it be possible. But if they say the condition of being at peace is that you have to compromise. And all that you have learned in the word of God all these many years, drop them. And it will be at peace. Forget about that kind of peace. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and of good fruits without partiality. Without partiality. And that's the wisdom God has to say. You know, the, the man is not wise. He doesn't understand that, that in leadership, you have to compromise. In leadership, you have to, you know, play favoritism. In leadership, you cannot treat everybody the same. You have to, you know, put people in their place and then other people you just have to say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh -uh. That's not the wisdom from above. That's the psychology of the world. But it says the wisdom which is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. The Lord help us. Amen. And the Lord grant us the firmness, the conviction, the consistency to know this is the way, the way to live in the gospel. And the way to live to please God, walk ye therein. The Lord help us to walk therein. Look at number three. Number three is the leaders of his glory. Impartial without respect of person. The leaders of his glory. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 21. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21, my son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Christians, believers, sons, daughters of God should not meddle for them that are given to change. The people who change like chameleons. Today, they're like this. When they're looking for a job, they're like that. When they're looking for a wife to marry, they're like that. When they're looking for a husband, you can't, you can't trust them. They're not dependable. You cannot say, I know, that's how sister so and so will act will behave no her behavior depends on the changing climate her behavior depends on the changing interaction she has with people you cannot say I depend on brother so and so that's exactly how he will act no their actions their behaviors their character depends on the changing circumstances. But you know, children of God, it says, my son, my daughter, fear thou the king and the, and the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. The Lord do that in us in Jesus' name. Meddle not, meddle not, meddle not with them that are given to change because it says in verse 22 in verse 22 for their calamity those who are given to change those who are like chameleons those who cannot depend upon you cannot trust them their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin 
of members. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good. It is not right. It is not righteous. It is not expected to have respect of persons in judgment. It is not right. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Anybody you are, you know, relating with is low, is high. Is big, is moderate, two plus three is always five. We don't say, okay, because of him, he doesn't calculate the way everybody calculates. Two plus three is, then you mention a kind of figure. No. In science, two plus three, always five. In behavior, Two plus three, always five. Whoever we're dealing with, the scripture is always the same. How do we modify the Bible for him? And we cannot modify scientific knowledge for him. That's not right. How do we exalt science above the word of God? There is no respect of persons with God, and it says it is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. The Lord give us the grace that we will abide by the clear, straightforward, simple teaching of the Word of God in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 5. We're reading from verse 20. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 20, it says, Them that sin rebuke before all. Oh, somebody says we cannot do that today because there are people there who are friends to the people that sin. There are people there who they don't care what people are done they might speak in the face of god that doesn't matter to them what matters to them is that my friend is untouchable my friend is incorrigible you cannot correct him going to hell leave him alone is my friend going to perdition leave him alone is my friend Pastor, do your work. Preach, preach the word, but don't correct anybody. Don't point the right way to anyone. How can we do? What are we teaching? If you cannot emphasize the word in everybody's life, what are we teaching then? It says them that sin rebuke before all that day that others also may fear it's not the preacher to fear the people who are preaching to but the people that do not lay by the standard of the word of god our action should make them fear because of the judgment that will come upon them in verse 21 in verse 21 it says i charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ that and the elect elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality do you include that in your Christian life? Do you include that in your profession of sanctification? Do you include that in your understanding of the practice of the righteous principles of the Lord that you do nothing by partiality 
and that you do not prefer one above, before, beyond the other. I pray that these words will become the watchword in the life of every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number, point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the brotherly fellowship without partiality, living by his gospel. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, fresh focus on brethren in the faith. Number two, faultless fellowship among brethren without favoritism. Number three is forthright faithfulness in builders of the faith. Let's look at number one. Number one, fresh focus on brethren in the faith. Uh, look at uh, the, how the Spirit of God inspired the apostle to write to the brethren. The brethren, the brethren, look at chapter 1. In chapter 1 verse 2, my brethren, that's the word, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations and trials. Don't mourn, don't be sorrowful, don't be crying. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, do not err, my beloved brethren. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, wherefore, my beloved brethren, is writing to brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. Don't wear your feelings on the skin. That every little thing you flare up, every little thing you are angry, where is the conversion? That's how we're one in the world. A little sentence makes people angry in the world. A look makes people angry, makes people angry in the world. You seeing a particular word different from the way you use it makes them angry. Why? How do we do that? Then you were converted now, and we're brethren, and the same attitude, anger, anger in the home, anger on the road, anger in the bus, anger, anywhere the anger in the church, anger in the presence of no. It says, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. You know, my brother, my sister, anger does not improve anything in the church. Anger does not make us more righteous, more holy, more rapturable. No. Because the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Look at chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 1. In chapter 2, verse 1, my brethren have not, brethren again, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, hacking, my beloved brethren. Uh, James is just saying, I'm writing to the brethren. I'm writing to the people who are supposed to have the grace of God and that grace of God has converted them, transformed them. They know more people in the world they are the brethren and it says, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. Look at verse 14. In verse 14 it says, What does it profit my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can that faith, empty faith, save him? Hey, look at uh, chapter 3 now, verse 1. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive 
the greater condemnation because if we are masters we are speakers we are preachers and yet we are not doers of the word condemnation comes and look at verse 10 in verse 10 out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing my brethren it's writing to the brethren and in every chapter is saying my brethren my brethren uh, these things ought not so to be look at verse 12 in verse 12 can uh, the fig tree my brethren is writing to brethren bear only berries either a vine fig so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh it tells us in chapter 4 verse 11 chapter 4 verse 11 is still writing to brethren it says speak not evil of another if you are a brother if you have the grace of god the grace of god controls us restrains us restricts us that because of the grace of God in us, we're able to moderate our conversations. We're able to restrain our conversations. It says, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, of his sister too, and judgeth his brother, his sister speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law but if thou judge the law thou art not a doer of the law but a judge look at chapter 5 chapter 5 verse 7 in chapter 5 verse 7 be patient therefore brethren the world doesn't have the ability or the strength to be to be patient yeah in a hurry 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 but those who are brethren those who are born again those who are children of god it says because we're brethren and we take after christ we can be patient be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the lord behold the husband man waiteth for the precious fruit and of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says grudge not one against another true believers bible believing believers righteous believers rapturable believers we're not carrying this uh, pregnancy of grudges 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 all about i grudge him for this i grudge him for that he grudges another person grudges another person and it carries a lot of weight a lot of load of grudges it says grudge not one against another brethren lest ye be condemned behold the judge standeth before the door look at verse 10 in verse 10 take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says but above all things my brethren is talking to brethren and when you come to read the epistle according to james if you're a child of god a brother a sister you play, pay close attention because it's reaching for you reaching for me reaching for the brethren it says but above all things, my brethren, swear not at all, neither by heaven, neither by the earth. Uh, there are people in the habit of saying, I swear, I swear, I swear by heaven. Christian, believer, the word of God is very clear. If you're a real child of God, just affirm your word 
I'm a child of God. I won't tell you a lie. This is what actually happened. Actually, actually. The people who swear by heaven, I swear, I swear, they tell a lot of lies. And they want you to believe them because they say, I swear, I swear, a believer is not in the habit of swearing. When anybody talks to you and he says, I swear, just tell them straight. You don't have to swear. Are you not a believer? Tell me what's on your heart. Are you trying to use God, I swear, to now propound a lie? It says, above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, chapter 5, it says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one converting brethren, any of you brethren, he backslides, he becomes a sinner. If he dies in that condition, he dies as a sinner, and he goes to hell. But brethren, if any of you do hear from the truth and one convert him, look at verse 20, it says, let him know that he which converted the sinner, one of you, a backslider, is not the sinner. He that which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at faultless fellowship among brethren without favoritism. Without favoritism. Look at Leviticus chapter 19. We're reading from verse 15. Leviticus chapter 19. And we're reading from verse uh, 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the persons of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. That's Old Testament. That's under the old covenant. That's before the great grace came into the lives of the people of God. He said, even at that time, even at that time, he said, we will not have respect or due respect, special respect for the mighty. Neither are we going to respect a person because he's poor. He says everything we do in judgment, everything we do in evaluating the lives of people, we do in righteousness. Thou shalt, uh, shalt thou, in, thou shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. Verse 21. In Proverbs 28, 21, to have respect of persons is not good. Anytime in the church, at the marriage committee, in the in choosing workers, in appointing people, in putting people in places of responsibility. It says to have respect of persons is not good. We shouldn't go by tribe. He speaks my language. It's from our extended family. Is the son, is the daughter of my uncle. No. It says to have respect of persons is not good. You know, your friend is not stable. Your friend is not steadfast and he confides in you, my friend. I can only tell you, I can't tell other people, look at what I did, look at what I did. And I don't know whether the pastor has an idea about it or not. 
because uh, you know free saint the pastor doesn't smile white the way he used to do to me don't worry come come and then they come and this fellow he knows that his friend is a sinner a backslider an adulterer a fornicator he knows that his friend is a wayward person but he's my friend and he says pastor pastor because he thinks he has good access to me and you look at them you see they come to play and gamble in the church so that we will be lenient on the sinners and let them remain in their pollution you know friend to have respect of persons is not good for a piece of bread that man will transgress look at jude chapter 1 verse 16 jude chapter 1 verse 16 these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage i pray the lord will set every one of us right ready for the rapture in jesus name you know i'm going to say another amen, amen. look at number three here number three here we're looking at forthright faithfulness by builders of the faith those who are called to build the faith of others and even to build your own faith we need to have forthright faithfulness you're not looking at the faces of people you're not looking at you know the standing of people you're not looking at the title of people you know title is just to make a difference between this is what he does is a preacher this is what he does is another kind of title that's, a, that's what the title is for but the title doesn't take anybody to heaven so if you're sitting on a title if you're holding on to a title if you're uplifting yourself by a title why don't you remember it's just title it means nothing in the sight of the Lord. What matters is holiness, follow peace and holiness with all men, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's what matters. Who shall I say to the heel of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? They that have clean hands. That's what matters and a pure heart that's what matters who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity that is what matters forthrightness forthright faithfulness in builders of the faith in jude chapter 1 reading from verse 20 jude chapter 1 verse 20 but she beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost verse 21 in verse 21 keep yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life and look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling it will keep you and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy verse 25 unto him be unto him the only wise god our savior the glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever amen, amen. Look at uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke 18, verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith, faithfulness 
on the earth. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find righteousness, holiness, purity, impartiality, transparency, faith on the earth. He will find a lot of hypocrisy when he comes. He'll find a lot of partiality, respect of persons when he comes. He'll find a lot of superficiality when he comes. People that will not have any principle, will not have any kind of firm stand, conviction. Many of the people, as the Lord is coming, they don't even think about the Lord's coming. And there's so much righteousness in people who are supposed to be saved and sanctified. That's why he asked, he said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith, fidelity, faithfulness on the earth? Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 5. Hebrews 11 verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, before the rapture that happened to him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Men, pleasers, will not make it. People, pleasers, will not make it. Society pleases. If I don't please them, I don't like any discomfort. If I don't please them, I feel uncomfortable. But it will hinder you from making it at the rapture. If you're always pleasing people, they want a lie to be told, you volunteer. They want something bad to be done your volunteer because you are then you become the one that everybody loves everybody appreciates want anybody to do anything wrong call him call him he'll do it for us people please us will not make it what's your goal why are you in the faith why are you a christian why are you a believer before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, but without faith and faithfulness to him, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're coming to point number 3 now. Point number 3, uh, the blameless followers with perseverance of the life of godliness. It tells us in James chapter 2, reading there from verse 5, Hakim, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him, verse 6. In verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seeds, verse 7. In verse 7, do not they blaspheme the worthy name by the which ye are called, they blaspheme the name of the Lord. They say, you know, we, we, we knew the, we know the deeper life as of old. You won't get them to compromise on anything. You can threaten to take their job. You can threaten to oppress them, persecute them. You can threaten to make them suffer. But deeper life of old, they stand like that rock of Gibraltar. No wind moves them, but 
Look at him. He says his deeper life. And look at what will make him to do. Look at how it will make him to compromise. Look at her. She says she's deep alive. But look at her. Look at the things she does. That deep alive that we knew of those days they kept to the Bible. They'll never do anything like that. You know, you make the people outside, outside the kingdom to blaspheme the name of the Lord because they cannot see you abiding in the word of God. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. Look at verse, uh, okay, that's verse 7. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the righteous heirs of the promised kingdom. Number two, the reproached heirs in the present kingdom, that the worldly kingdom, that the earthly kingdom. Number three, the rich heirs of the prevailing kingdom. Look at number one. Number one, the righteous heirs of the promised kingdom. It tells us in James chapter 2 verse 5. James chapter 2 verse 5. Hakin, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 it tells us for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh nor many mighty nor many noble are called verse 27 it says but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty verse 28 it says and the base things of the world and the things which are despised at god chosen ye the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Look at that again. As many as are led by the Spirit of the world, they are the sons of the world. As many as are led by the Spirit of Adam, giving excuse 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 as many as had led by the spirit of adam they're the sons of adam as many as had led by the spirit of society they are the offspring of society they're not born again yet but when you are born again and you come to know the lord and you live by the grace that comes from the Lord as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 15, in verse 15, for ye are not, have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. There's the spirit of bondage captures the soul, captures the mind, and you do not have the chance, the liberty, the freedom to do the will of God and to obey the word of God. You live under fear. When you are by yourself, you live under fear. When you are with people, you live under fear. And when you are in the church, 
where there should be freedom because the Lord has set us free free to live and free to act and free to believe and free to soar so we can get to heaven not ashamedly and you know <laughs> you know uh, kind of uh, you're buying down your head i'm going to I'll have conviction i don't want my conviction to be known if there's any place where we should be bold it's in the church where we have the father the son the holy spirit and we have the people of god encouraging us but even in the church the people are so much afraid something is wrong with that person it says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father look at verse 16 verse 16 the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God verse 17 in verse 17 and eight children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified with him you'll be glorified with him number two we're looking at the reproached heirs of the present kingdom that's the present kingdom of the world they live in such a way that there's reproach. They belittle the church because of them. They belittle Christ because of them. Reproach comes through them. And the Lord wants us to get away from all that so that we'll be bringing glory to God all the time. James chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. In James chapter 2 verse 6, But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seeds look at verse 7 in verse 7 do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which ye are called before you do anything you should ask yourself if i do that the people who watch me do that will they honor christ will they blaspheme christ the people you interact with and you show an ungodly, unrighteous, carnal, fleshly, immoral interaction. Those people have minds to think. Those some believers or those backsliders or those so-called members of the church, they think, they say, okay, <laughs> I understand I'm like this because I know this is my level but look at this man high in the church look at this woman high in the church look at how they behave they blaspheme the name of the Lord by which you are called now if people blaspheme the name of the Lord by your action your behavior and you know sometimes it's even in the open you forget yourself and the people who are watching you display a kind of carnal behavior to say why is this fellow doing like this even in the secret sanctuary of the lord and if they are not careful they blaspheme the name of the lord because of you do not they blaspheme the worthy name by the which ye are called. I pray God will help all of us. He will help you. He will help me. So people will not blaspheme the Lord because of the, of the others. They profess to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, you know it's not true. They are not filled with the Holy Ghost if 
people blaspheme the name of God through them. Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. In Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Amen. Amen. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. The people who claim were Jews, but God said, Jesus said, they are the synagogue of Satan. The people who say I belong to Christ, and in life, in behavior, in character, they deny him. I pray you will not be like that. We're looking at number three here. Number three here, we're looking at the rich heirs of the prevailing kingdom. The rich heirs of the prevailing kingdom. We're looking at um, James chapter 2 verse 5. In James chapter 2 verse 5, Hakina, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, rich in faith, rich in faith. When we're rich in faith, we're rich in grace because we can pray by faith and we get more grace. When we're rich in faith, we're rich in love because we can pray and the love of God will flow into our lives and through our lives. When we're rich in, the, we're rich in faith, we're rich in the, in the truth, the truth of the word of God so enriches our lives and then from us it enriches the lives of all the people. When we're rich in faith, we're rich in the fruit of the spirit because it is the faith we'll pray and then the faith were rich in will then be pronounced in us rich in faith you're rich in love you're rich in you're rich in joy the joy of the lord will be your strength because you are rich in faith you're rich in godliness you're rich in holiness because that faith the true faith will bring godliness and holiness into your life when you're rich in faith you're rich in hope because your hope is grounded in the lord affirmed in the lord you're rich in faith you're rich in good action in activity because faith without works is dead you're rich in faith you're rich in uh, action that will benefit other people he says my brethren has not got chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him tonight with all that we have studied we want to come before the Lord by faith and we want our faith to get anywhere we're deficient anywhere we're lacking anywhere where we have not been who we ought to be we believe in God it will enrich our faith I said it will enrich our faith and we will live by the face of the Son of God who loved us and he died for us, gave himself for us. Let's rise up now and let's talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer because he can enrich our lives, enrich our faith. One thing, he wants us to understand that he is the Lord of glory. He is the Lord of glory. Why don't you acknowledge him as you are standing there, as you are praying there, acknowledge him. He is the Lord of glory. He is the God of glory and he is impartial, impartial. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why? Because he is impartial. He's impartial. If he blessed others, he's going to bless you too. If he transformed others, it's going to transform you too. He changed Saul and became Paul the apostle. He changed his nature. 
it changes life, it changes the pursuit, it changes everything about him. And you say, God, who is no respecter of persons. And because of that, he'll answer your prayer to you, but you must desire, you must desire to have the very nature of the Lord and the very character of Christ, the Lord of glory. Tell him so that that grace will increase in your life. That glory will increase in your life. And it will change you from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And you'll be stronger and stronger in the Lord. And God will give you the backbone to be able to stand, not having respect of persons, not living your life in partiality, not living your life in respect of persons, not living your life in favoritism, tribalism. But you'll stand straight, firm, transparent. And whatever you do for A, that's what you'll do for B. And you will not be, you know, after people because they give you money. They give you material things and say, I can never, I can never say anything negative, even if it's the truth, because he gives me this and gives me that. That's respect of persons. That's depending on bribes. That's the nature of the people of the world. But to show the nature of Christ. No respect of person. Neither fear nor favor. You're not doing anything because I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I shouldn't do that. But I fear. I shouldn't say that. But if I didn't say that, I fear what they will do. How they will act. I shouldn't stand that firm, but I fear spirit of bondage again to fear. You're not serving the Lord wholeheartedly. If the fear of man is what controls you, favor, the favor they show me, the flattery they give me, the human honor they give me. And if I don't keep on bending to them, compromising on their behalf, they will lessen the favor. Okay, you're living for favor. You're not li living in faith. You're not living for heaven. Why don't you become a real believer? transparent believer, impartial believer, a standing believer, steadfast in the things of the Lord. You know the truth, and you live and walk in that truth. Tell the Lord, I'll grant you more grace so we will not remain jellyfish, no backbone, can't stand, worried, anxious about what people do. Why are you worried about that? They have their life to live. Their judgment is in the hand of God. Live by the standard, principle of righteousness that you have learned. You want to allow fear of man, favor from man, to make you partial. To make you hypocritical. You don't really respect the person, but you act as if I respect. Why? Why? Say the right thing. Do the right thing. 
whatever you can say behind him say in front of him what are you afraid of no partiality interviewing people recommending people giving people title no partiality no tribalism no favoritism live by the conviction you have in your heart pray and pray in faith and pray with commitment that kind of prayer that brings virtue from heaven into your life into our lives and you can honor the Lord of glory by having the nature and the attribute of the Lord of glory you please the God of glory by having faith in him and living faithfully for him through him by him and the one that lifts us lifts us in glory the lifter of his glory are you in turn you lift up that glory looking unto him all the time and living by him by his grace by his truth all the time Brotherly fellowship. Are you a brother? You're a brother, you're a sister. Whatever temptation comes, you resist the tempter, whoever he is. You resist the temptress, whoever she is. After all, you're not living to please her, you're not living to please him. You're living to please God, the God of glory. Fresh focus on who brethren are. If you're a true brother, a true member of the family of God Christ is your focus Christ likeness is your focus a brother a sister beloved in the Lord God's glory will be your focus, not your ease, my ease, what I like, the smiles of the people. That's not the focus. Your focus is God's glory. In the day and in the night. Before the king, before the poor. God's glory. Why don't you have fresh focus on that? Faultless fellowship. Not fellowship in pretense. 
fellowship in hypocrisy. No. Transparent fellowship. And whatever should not be in the fellowship of the saints, you see it courageously point it out. That's your focus. So we we'll bring God glory. Forthright. Forthright faithfulness. Forthright. Forthright. You are not meandering. You are not meddling with those who are giving to change. You are forthright. They know you for something that you stand on what is truth. Consequence? Don't worry about that. Pressure? Don't worry about that. They might call you names. What's your concern about that? Your concern is to have focus on bringing glory unto God. Be a blameless follower of Christ. No dirty thing behind the curtain, behind the door. Holy, godly, righteous. Whoever stands, whoever falls, you stand. Whoever backslides, whoever lives in a way they blaspheme the name of the Lord, that's not your concern. Your focus on being righteous, being godly, dependable, trustworthy, uncompromising. Stand. Let everyone who knows you know that you are not going to compromise because of any favor they are doing to you. Or anything negative they can do towards you. Let the people know who you are, where you stand, how you live, that you've made up your mind to follow Christ transparently. Not cutting corners. No partiality. No respect of persons. In Jesus' name we pray. That's good. Another headquarters. Amen. Amen. Father, we surrender, we submit, heart, spirit, soul, even our body, unto you and to your will. That Lord, by your grace, in your strength, by your spirit, all these uh, attributes and attitudes of men, partiality, respect of persons, hypocrisy, Lord, 
We reject them from today in Jesus' name. The grace to stand, to stand like the brethren, like sons and daughters in the kingdom of God without gambling with our souls like the people of the world do, Lord. We commit ourselves completely now unwaveringly before you. Help us and grant us the grace so to do in Jesus' name. Lord, all the vacillations of the past, all the changing and meddling with the those who are given to change of the past, forgive and cleanse us from them in Jesus' name. Lord, from now on, anywhere we are, we will not compromise. We will not bend to the people who are looking for slaves, slaves to their evil lives. We will not compromise with anyone. In grace to stand, the backbone to stand, the strength of the spirit to stand give us lord in jesus name when we ought to say no give us the grace to say no whoever we need to say no to any time every time the power the courage of mind the backbone of conviction to say no to them, give it to us in Jesus' name. Everywhere we go, everywhere we find ourselves, we'll have this fresh focus, daily focus, consistent focus, to focus on bringing glory unto the Lord. Day by day, living like Christ no partiality, no hypocrisy, no pretense, no fear of man, no bending to evil people. Lord, we thank you. You helped people of old, you will help us. I will pray, Lord, from this very moment, we'll begin to practice it. No respect of persons, no partiality, no hypocrisy, no bending down to evil, but living our lives in holiness, righteousness, before you all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.
of God himself. Let's praise him for the opportunity he has given unto us to come before his presence this evening. The Bible says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving. We want to open our mouths and begin to thank the Lord. Lift up your voices to the Lord this evening and thank him. We want to thank him for the just concluded GCK and Easter retreat. For the manifold abiding blessings of God which we received at the just concluded retreat. We saw verifiable signs and wonders how that God worked mightily, miraculously at the GCK. You know, and at the retreat, we received the A to Z revelation of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Baptizer, our Coming King. Let's thank God for the privilege God has given unto us. Now we have come to his presence this evening. Let's thank him for the privilege he has given unto us to, uh, to, to come again, to gather in his presence for to learn at his feet. You know, there are those who do not have this opportunity or those who do not heed this opportunity. But we are here again to learn at the feet of Christ. Thank him for the opportunity he has given unto us to eat our field from the abundance of his household. And tonight is going to be a special night where the Lord is going to reveal himself again unto us. And we are going to drink from the streams of rejoicing. Thank God for the opportunity he has given unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 10, the Bible says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of his people be. Now this evening we have come to gather before the Lord to hear the word of God. First of all, we want to thank God for the man of God that God is going to use. God has been using him already, our pastor, Pastor Dovev Kumi. God has been using him to nourish us with the word of God time and time again. And yet again this evening, we are going to receive again from the man of God. Let's thank God for the man of God who he has been using. And let's pray tonight that the Lord will grant him auction. Auction that he will speak the word of God with boldness. And there will be fresh anointing to teach us again. Tonight, there will be revelation of the word of God, and as the Lord reveals himself unto us, we will heed the commands of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In John chapter 6, in verse 44, the Bible says, No man cometh to me except the Father draws him, and tonight you have come to the presence of the Lord. You are going to pray and tell God that the Lord will help you. You will see Jesus today that the Lord himself will draw you to his presence. The Lord will draw his church nearer to him through his word, the word which we will hear today. That the, the word we will hear today, none of this word will fall to the ground and become unfruitful. Pray for yourself that your heart will be a fertile ground, that the word which you hear will profit you. You are not going to be dull of hearing. You know, you'll be hearing it again and again. It looks like you have a very big note that you have been writing over and again, and it seems as if we are familiar tonight, that the Lord will help us, will not be too familiar with his word. The word will profit us, that your eyes will be open. Your eyes will be open, there will be revelation from his word, there will be illumination from the word. There will be insight, and the Lord will give you understanding from the word. The Lord will give you direction, and you will have complementary and complete obedience. Everything that we hear, we will respond and say, all oh, that the Lord has commanded us, we will do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because of the privilege you have given unto us to come to your presence again. Lord, we are praying tonight that you will open our eyes and you will teach us out of your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the word which we hear tonight will profit us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let's be seated. Let's remember that there should be no clapping when we call the visitors and the newcomers uh, and after the choir ministration. And as we comply, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this evening to be blessed of you and to learn at your feet. Father, we pray that you will fill our empty vessels to overflowing tonight in Jesus' name. You prepare our hearts even as we praise you 
even this evening in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we offer, as we offer unto thee the sacrifice. Seas of tens given as we offer unto thee the sacrifice, seas of praise. Hallelujah, we bring the of praise into the house of the of the Lord. into the house of the Lord as we offer the sacrifice O seas of tens given as we offer unto thee Blessings and honor and glory and praise and glory and praise and glory and praise. Blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise. And praise, oh, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And praise, and praise, oh, blessings and honor. And glory and praise be unto Christ. I lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings. Lift up Jesus. He is Lord of Lords. Lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let us lift him up. Oh, he is king of kings, and he is lord of lords. Oh, he is king of kings, king of kings, and lord of lords. Let us lift him up. He is Lord of Lords, lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. All the way to Calvary, He went for me. He went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary, He went for me he died to set me free hallelujah he went for me he went for me all the way All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he went for me, he went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me free. Hallelujah. 
Oh, he went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, is the truth, and the life. Oh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Oh, the truth and the life. Yes. Is the truth and the life. Oh, Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Is the truth and the life. The truth and the life. I'll live for Jesus day after day. I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day. Day after day, I'll live for Jesus. Yes, come what may. The Holy